Welcome everyone to this session on introducing immersive technologies for the primary classroom. I'd like to thank the Australian Government Department of Education for making this session today possible. My name is Sue Carter. I'm a STEM project officer with the University of Adelaide, part of the Computer Science and Education Research Group. I'm coming to you today from Larrakia land, right at the top of Australia from Darwin. And I invite uh, all participants to write into the chat where you might be joining us from today uh, and along with the Indigenous lands that you're on. So to begin our session, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of country and place throughout Australia and their deep feelings of attachment and relationship of First Nations peoples of Australia to country and place. We respect and value First Nations people's connection to land, sea, sky and waters and their rich and enduring contributions to education. Today's session, we're going to look at what immersive technologies are, why we use them, how they connect the Australian curriculum, and then provide you some classroom examples or experiences and lesson ideas. To accompany our, uh, this particular webinar, I've created a document which outlines 16 immersive technologies available for primary school classrooms. And this document will be available at the end of the session. So let's take a look at what immersive technologies are. There are so many new technologies being released every day and the immersive technology area is expanding rapidly. Another name for immersive technologies is extended reality. And that's where we're integrating the virtual digital content with our physical environment. And what we're doing is enabling our users to engage with a blended experience of the real and the virtual. These are being used more and more in education and have the possibility to bring to life learnings for students, particularly around difficult concepts that they would otherwise only understand through a two-dimensional example or through the written text. So I'll begin with augmented reality. Augmented reality overlays digital information uh, into the existing real world environment. And they generally use triggers for that. QR codes are a very common example of what that might be, uh, along with merge cubes. In order to make augmented reality happen, you need to have some sort of digital camera, be it on a uh, mobile device or a smartphone, and there are a variety of applications, games, uh, education, and even marketing. One of the first ones um, that got AR going was Pokemon Go. It was a popular mobile game, and uh, it used the AR technology to overlay those, over, sorry, overlay those Pokemon characters onto the real world. The next type of immersive technology is virtual reality. Now these are immersive experiences created by software. And what happens is that the user needs to put on a pair of goggles or uh, some sort of headset and they disappear out of the real world and they enter into a virtual world where things can seem real, but they're not. The next type of immersive technology is mixed reality. Just waiting for the slide to change. There we go. So now mixed reality is like a combination of an augmented reality blended into a digital real world content, but there are some key differences. This AR adds digital content into the real world, typically viewed through a device such as a smartphone or tablet, as I explained before. 
This content is overlaid onto the real world environment, but it's not integrated into it. And AR can be used for a variety of applications, again, games, education, and marketing. Now with that mi uh, mixed reality, it's a bit more advanced form of AR and it integrates that digital content into the real world environment, but it uses sensors and cameras to track the user's movements and position, allowing the digital content to be placed and interact with it in the real world. And some of the examples I'm going to show you today cross into the augmented reality and the mixed reality world as well. Now, this integration allows for a much more immersive and interactive experience. Examples of this include the Microsoft HoloLens, which was a headset, and it allowed users to integrate with, uh, sorry, interact with holograms in the real world environment. And the headsets could then track the user's movements and create a virtual image that could be manipulated in a real world. And the last one I want to look at is artificial intelligence. And uh, this is where machines are being used to mimic human capabilities and where they see or recognise objects and listen and they can interpret and analyse sounds. And we have a lot of artificial intelligence around us today uh, and sometimes people aren't even aware that they're using it. Obviously, one of the most known of these and it is currently under some form of investigation across Australia, is the chat GPT, where some jurisdictions have completely banned it and others have opened it up to see what are the possibilities both for teachers and for students. So now that I've explained what the four different immersive technologies are, it'd be great if you could uh, fill in the poll that I'm about to launch. And I'd like to uh, find out what are your experiences with immersive technologies so far? Have you had the opportunity to use them personally? Have you used them within your school or are you brand new to them? Uh, have you had some sort of professional learning and had some exposure to them or is this completely new to you? So I'll launch the poll. And I'll leave it open for a few seconds so that you're able to choose one of those answers. So some interesting results that are coming up. I've got 77% of our audience today that have voted so far. So I'll end the poll and I'll share the results. Tony, can you see those results there? And yes, I can see them. Great. Okay. So we can see that a couple of people have used them uh, in a personal way. Uh, it looks like there's quite a bit of school use, which is great to hear, and that some people have had some professional learning around them. So I'll move on. Now, why immersive technologies? Obviously, these are starting to get out there in our social world uh, and in our real world. So, for instance, in the area of agriculture, people are starting to use different apps uh, in order to look at different um, animal. Uh, uh, agricultural things they're looking at bugs and at how they affect crops uh, they're looking at identification of different animals and um, how they can enhance our crops for our future food bowl shopping is a very popular one now where you can try on clothes through an augmented reality app um, you may have seen Ikea where you can actually bring furniture into your home and see what it looks like as well. And uh, in health, they're used for training in health, uh, particularly for surgeons to start to do some maybe tricky types of um, surgeries. 
and to practice in an augmented reality way. And of course, in education, um, that area is booming with different immersive technologies. And I guess what's really important is that if we're going to use them, that we use them well. Remembering that immersive technologies are not toys to play with, they're actually tools that we want our students to learn through. So looking at our Australian curriculum, it's really important that we don't just confine using immersive technologies with only the area of digital technologies. This isn't a chance now to make learning authentic and meaningful and promote deeper learning across the curriculum. So today we're gonna to look at a range of different science options and mathematical options. You can use them throughout English, through our humanities and social sciences. We'll look at something that's related to geography and of course in the arts as well. And I didn't put languages up here, but they can be used with languages as well. But we really wanna to connect to the educational value uh, of what's available through immersive technologies. Now there's this poster that is available where there are some highlights for our immersive technologies and the fact that they motivate our learners. And if you look at that first picture in the top right-hand corner, you'll see that the students are actually a bit spaced out. So safety is an important aspect as well to consider the area that the students are using. Of course, it allows our text and our images to align and we're transforming the content so that students can interact with it. And one thing that I'd really like to point out is about evaluating the apps that you're going to use. And uh, the Primary English Teachers Association of Australia recently did some research. They were funded to look at evaluating augmented reality apps. And they found five particular areas that were really important. The first one was the usability. Was the um, app that they were, that you might be using, is it user-friendly? Is it easy to manoeuvre? Is it and um, is the graphical interface, the user experience, an easy one and a positive one? Look at the interactiv interactability of it. How interactive is it in terms of the touch, in terms of being able to draw around movement and uh, around color that's available as well? Then there's the contextuality, the contextuality of it. What is the relationship between the real world and the virtual world? Do they actually match? You know, for example, IKEA having their furniture app where you can look at furniture in your home. Uh, the Real Estate uh, Institute going around and doing 3D um, videos. So when you're looking at maybe buying a home, you feel like you're walking through it. Then there's the spatiality aspect of it. Does it stay within the screen frame? Does it disappear off? Is it um, scalable? Is it like oh, the correct scale? Is it too big, too small? They're things to look at as well. And of course, is it multi, it doesn't have the multi-modality aspect to it. Are there a range of modes within the app? For instance, the visual, the auditory, the gestural, the kinesthetic, what's actually there for the student uh, to interact with. So if you're more interested, if you're interested in hearing more about that, I encourage you to go to the PETA website and have a look at uh, the usability um, and evaluation of apps. So now let's get into what's available. The first experience I want to share with you today is the Quiver app. Quiver is free, but there is also the paid version, which is the Quiver EDU. And you can find out more at quivervision.com. And this is a very simple way of introducing students to augmented reality. And these first four I'm going to share with you are based on the early years. So this one is as simple as printing out uh, something on paper for the student to color it in, scan it with the app, 
and see the augmented reality come to life. So the first example I've got there for you is a frog. This one is around the life cycle of the frogs. So students are able to colour in the different aspects of the life cycle and then you'll see the frog come to life with the colours that the student has coloured it in with. Uh, the next example, mathematical, is looking at a uh, pentagon and then seeing if you can bring it into a three-dimensional model. So you've got a net and then it comes out with the exact colouring that the student has done on the sheet. What's really good about these is that there are a whole lot of activity plans that go along with all the different uh, packs that are available. So there are 37 quiver packs and there are 67 lessons that come with them that teachers can use straight away. One free uh, option within Quiver is Dot Day. And this is based on the book, the internet, um, sorry, it's based on a book and there is an international Dot Day on September the 15th. Now, the book was written by Peter Reynolds. And uh, so this is a celebratory activity that you can do. It's a story about a caring teacher who dares a doubting student to trust in her own abilities by being brave enough to make her mark. She was asked to do some artwork, but she was feeling very negative about it and felt that she couldn't mark anything. So the book starts out with just looking at the dot and watching how this dot can grow and watch how this child's journey of self-discovery and sharing has inspired countless children and adults uh, to feel good about themselves when it comes to art. So the story is available on YouTube. Uh, you don't have to buy the book and it can be read out to the students via that. It connects beautifully with the Australian curriculum general capabilities of personal and social capability. And it can be adapted into visual arts, science and maths lessons. The students can paint a picture, they can write a poem or explore a two dimensional shape and watch it come to life in 3D, as you can see on the screen. And I'll just note that today is the 14th of March, so happy Pi Day to everyone. In the Dot Day activity, students are encouraged to decorate the um, dot, and then when you pass the app over it, your dot jumps out. And you can see some illustrations at the bottom where an eye has been drawn onto a dot, so it looks like it's an actual eyeball itself. Along with the International Dot Day um, handout, there's also a lesson plan with activities. Another activity that's available is to do some design. So you can print out the sneaker and the students can do their own designs on it and then bring that to life. Or there's one for a cup or a takeaway coffee mug. And again, students are encouraged to do their own designs. And there are lesson plans to go along with them, including Pi Day activity as well. So you might have your students create a flag on their sneaker or on their coffee cup or a logo for a business. Right, I'll move on to experience number two. This is the Rekagaki AR app, and this one is. Hmm. This one was free, but last time I looked, it was $1.49. So sometimes it's free if you go in on the right day, um, but it may have, yeah, you just have to look on the app store. Uh, and remember that if you're using some sort of Jamf um, ability for all your apps, you can purchase multiple apps uh, for a reduced price. So if you need to have something on 50 devices, you're not paying that amount of money 50 times. Sue, there was a question in the chat from Christine who asked about whether the designs are from the paid or the free version on the on the last. Right. So they may be the paid version, but 
again, some days when you go in there, you find things are free. Usually when they've done an update on their app, things end up being free for about 24 hours. So Rakagaki, interesting name. It means scribble in Japanese. And the whole idea is that students are doing some sort of drawing or doodle or, or bringing their art to life. It's a bit like a magic painter. And what happens is that these images that are sitting on paper actually lift up and appear like a piece of cardboard and dance around. And they actually give some sort of life and personality to the character. So again, this is another one using a um, mobile device camera or something on a, an Android device or an iPad or a smartphone. And what you can do is interact with the character that's moving around, a bit like feeding a pet. When you touch the screen, food comes down to it and it can be fed bananas and fish and other sorts of things as well. Uh, the, the image uh, that the child has drawn that's come to life, it can run around, it can laugh, it can trip over things. Uh, and students are able to do a recording, take photographs uh, and bring their piece of artwork to life in a story. One thing I do want to point out is that it needs plain paper because as you can see in that middle image there, if it's on lined paper, the lines get captured and you'll see that this particular stick figure image actually has all these lines coming off it that have grown into the uh, character that's come alive. You can see on the right hand side here that these characters have come alive and they were dancing around the different Rubik's cubes and uh, on that particular person's hand. So you can see how these could be quite uh, a lot of fun for younger children. Now, Kim Martin on Teachers Pay Teachers has put up this free uh, worksheet and it's around uh, designing some shapes for the app. So you can actually use some preloaded shapes and uh, have a go with that, but encourage your students to do their own shapes as well. And I think if I press play, we can see something come to life. And I think I forgot to share my... Um, yes, I've got it, it's good. I'll just do that again. So here you can see the panda bear has jumped up and is moving about and now the giraffe is going to do the same thing and they're going to dance around and some food has been uh, thrown down, cheese and carrots and fish and then those things are actually eating it as well. So here's a picture of a girl, you put the app over it and it becomes red on the outside when it's red the whole picture. And then it literally peels off the page like a cardboard cutout. We have a little bit of music and then it dances around. And then you're able to draw on the screen as well. So that's um quite an exciting uh, option there. So moving on. Oh, yep. So that's that one. All right. Uh, the third experience. Oh, are there any questions around Rakagaki? No, no questions about that. Just that okay. they think it's cool and the screen recording coming to life is the younger students would really love that. Very much so. All right, well, you thought that one was good. Oh, sorry, right? there was one more. Lucy yeah. had a question. Can you upload video onto the sharing sites for parents? Uh, yes, you can. <laughs> um, I've had a lot of students use my iPad and I've ended up with lots of videos on there. So, yes, it is. It just goes into your library on your device. Right, let's take a look at Wonderscope. Now, there's a free part of this and there's a paid part of this one. Apparently, every time they release a new story, uh, it's free or everything's free, but then 
only one thing becomes free and everything else has to be paid for. So you just got to uh, keep your eye on uh, when things are free from Wonderscope. So this one um, allows a story to come to life for children to interact with. So what they're doing is they're seeing this story happen around them. You can be inside or outdoors, it doesn't matter. And it's interactive because uh, there are, there's some reading on the screen and you have to read it out. And then the audio, the character inside picks it up and responds and you help that character to problem solve along the way. And it feels like the student or the child is in the story and they're part of it. So I'm just gonna play a little bit of uh, Little Red, the inventor. Actually, that's not Little Red. Okay. Here we go. Wonder scope. Oh good, you're here. We better get going now. Grandma has a lot of seeds for us to plant. Can I touch it? That's cool. What if you fall? What you got there? I'll get crushed. So so what I like about that is it's interesting that the child's looking through the iPad, but then actually looks around. Where is it? It's not there, but they can see it. And then to actually put your hand there and feel like you're part of it. And Little Red talks to the girl and the girl on the screen, it's got some prompts. So it's encouraging her to read. And when she's read it out, then the uh, character in the augmented reality then responds. Now this is an award-winning app um, with these extraordinary stories. Um, so can the students write the story or they, does it change with what they're writing? Uh, these are preloaded stories on the app and the next best part would be for students to actually create their own and have them uploaded. I don't think it's at that stage yet. Um, but from what I've seen and what I've looked at, the child's asked a question it comes up on the screen, they read the screen. Uh, sometimes there are options and you have to choose an option. So I'll show these ones and uh, just briefly, not the whole lot, just so you can see uh, an idea of what the other stories are. So there's five at the moment. So this is Cleo's Cosmic. And this one is around um, a bit of cyber safety and bullying and helping students to understand about behaviours. That disappeared quickly. Uh, this one is Whoa. Wonders Land What's Ring that? Master Wanted. There's a great landing pad. Tap the grid and we can start. So it told her to tap. It's landed. <laughs> Hello? Hello, and welcome to Wondersland, a place where magical things happen when you read the word wonder out loud. All I have to do is say wonder? Exactly. Just like that. <laughs> so that one's Wonderland. Huh? Wonder. Wow. This is the latest one. The museum is closing in five minutes. And you're going into a virtual museum. So the child literally we will be like open again tomorrow. Oh, oh! Intruder! We have an intruder! Will you be my junior deputy? Yes! Brilliant! Use your light. Our shadowy feet must be somewhere dawdling in the dark. There's a hidden trail somewhere. Try and the last one I want to show you is this brief history of amazing stunts. Now, what I've done is I've taken this uh, real lady. Her name is Betty. And she is the one that really did this at the age of 89. Betty Bromage. Thought she do something fun for her before she turns 90. Thank you. 
isn't in the app, this is the part that's in the app. We're seeing her, seeing her, her life uh, being transformed into augmented reality. Hi there. I'm Betty Bromwich, and I've just had the perfect idea of what to do before my 90th birthday. I'm going to wing walk. Wing walk? Yes, I'm going to zoom around the sky. Is that a good idea at your age? Age ain't nothing but a number. And so that goes on. So, uh, yeah, there's, there's lots of um, fun to be had in those, but then again, it's about um, allowing children to be creative uh, and then to see what they can come up with themselves, particularly around story writing. I think they're really great prompts. Any questions on Wonderscope? Couldn't find my mute button. No, Sue. Okay, I'm going to move on now to the fourth of my early years ones. Um, but this one does cross over into uh, primary years as well. Now, this one is called Arility. And yes, it is free. It was developed with um, the help of the Western Australian Department of Education. And this particular app is all around health and road safety education experience for our, for our um, children to understand how to be safe. So it has these 360 degree visuals and sound effects in it as well. And it looks at things like how to be safe on the road, or how to be safe around floods, um, around railways and what you should do, even driveways and, and your own home and footpaths. Uh, and so the students are able to interact with the avatar characters that are in there. And sometimes they're putting these avatars are in dangerous situations and the students have to find, well, what is the good choice to stay safe? This particular app has a dashboard so teachers can also monitor their students' progress. So I'll just play these for you so you can get an idea. I'm doing them both at once. One has sound. So you can see with the bus and how the students are getting off the bus and thinking about, okay, so how do I go across the road? Because we know sometimes people do go on buses, so they will not with that. Well, here you can see where a child's hurt themselves. This one's great around germs. Look at where germs are. So these would be great to go with. And so there are a whole lot of lessons already made for teachers. Now, some of this uh, is also in UK mode, so it's uh, aligned to the UK curriculum, but these ones that I've pointed out for you today are aligned to our Australian curriculum. And so the road safety element looks at about crossing and waiting, about what happens if a ball rolls out on the road or in your driveway, um, when you're opening a door, which door should you open? What do you need to look out for uh, around buses and how to stay safe, about gates and about biking uh, and your own footpath and driveway safety as well. So there's some really good lessons within that that we can use as part of our health. There's also uh, some things around sharp. Uh, what happens if you find something sharp? What should you do uh, around saying safe when someone is bleeding and also about germs? So this um, act, sorry, this app uh, gives these experiences and risks and students learning through this immersive environment uh, without having to connect in dangerous situations. All right, so now I'm going to move over to some geography. And this one's called GeoGeek AR. And this is about um, making geography feel real. So I'll just play this. And you can see that uh, the satellite image of the Earth appears. And there are some questions that are being asked. So in this case, it's where's Canada? And then you have to click on Canada. Or which car which flag, uh, you know, which country belongs to this flag and so on and so forth, um, asking where Singapore is. So it gives 
children a, a sense of, well, what countries do we have around our world? Uh, and they have this 3D experience of a globe, a bit like when we've got a globe in the classroom and the children might be spinning that around and looking at different things. Um, this gives it to them in a three-dimensional way through a digital uh, device. So there are realistic um, representations of our Earth. It also has a political map view as well uh, if the satellite view is too difficult. There are lots of different topics in it such as countries and uh, cities. Uh, you can look at flags and rivers and oceans and mountains. There are eight learning units in there that are free. And then if you want additional units, it is a cost of $1.49. I did read that you could have the whole package of 40 units for I think it was $14.99 US. Uh, but I haven't seen what that, that converts to around $20 Australian. So it has a top 20 quiz in it where students can um, will be asked a number of different questions and it kind of helps their general knowledge around geography. There are areas in it uh, which are around Australia and Oceania and Asia and Europe, as well as North America and South America. But it gives the children the options um, to mark countries and locate different cities. They have to assign flags to different countries. Uh, they can label rivers and name the oceans, and they can even place pins on different mountains to identify them, along with answering lots of multiple choice questions. There's also uh, with the quiz that it has different levels of difficulty. So it enables students um, of all ranges of understandings to engage with it as well. Now, my next app um, experience uh, is Plantail. Now this one does cost $1.49. And what it does is it gives students a, a journey at exploring living things and looking at the stages of growth of a plant from the simple seed right through to a reproducing flowering plant. I think in this case, we're looking at sunflowers. Uh, what it does is it explores the anatomy uh, of the different uh, areas of the plant. So there's the root system that you can look at. You can go right into the leaf and see the anatomy there, right into the stem and see all the different parts and look internally and externally about how liquids flow within the plant, as well as looking at the, um, a flower that um, blooms from a bud into its beautiful flower with petals. I'll just play this so you can see. So what happens is you walk around with it and you put your plant somewhere and then you can see your lovely sunflower plant. And then you can pull different parts of it apart to look at the stem, the leaves, the flower and so on. So you can go right in and look at a cross section and then it gives you some information. So again, this might suit more uh, upper primary than middle or lower primary. And I think it could even be used in secondary as well for biology in years seven and eight. So along with Plantail is Brain Apps. This one is $2.99 and very similar, built on the same structure, but this one's all about the human brain. So it enables children to learn more about how their brain works. It looks at the structure and anatomy of both the skull and the brain and what works inside the brain, the internal and external areas of it. So you learn um, about functions of brain cells and um, neurons and how things travel uh, and you can experience how the brain communicates with the senses as well. It even has a uh, quiz in it called Brain Hunt and the students can actually pull the brain apart and put it back together again. Now for younger students, this is kind of a bit of fun as they explore the brain, but the reading level uh, is of a higher reading level of probably more year, year five, six students and with some parts of it moving into year seven and eight as well. Uh, and it's good that students can actually peel back the different layers and see how their brain is functioning. So this particular app has four sections to it. 
So first of all, they explore the brain. The second se section then focuses on evolution. So students can then look at different skulls and look at how skulls have developed. Then the third area is the physiology of the brain and the cells and the communication. And then the fourth part is the quiz to see how much they've learned and understood. Right, experience eight. Again, built on the same platform as the previous two. This one's Frogipedia. This one's a little bit more expensive. The price seems to be going up. So the last time I looked, it was $5.99. Did start out as $1.49. I wonder as, as things get more popular, the price tends to go up. Um, but this one is an opportunity to look at the life cycle of frogs and explore the anatomy of frogs. So it shows you each phase of the life cycle, both from the egg through to the tadpole uh, and the froglet into the frog. And it's got lots of lifelike visuals and interactive displays for students to examine a frog's anatomy. I guess one interesting part is the dissection. Uh, so you can dissect the frog and look at this virtual frog and pull out the different internal organs and look at the body systems, as well as the skeletal and the muscular and the digestive systems as well. And along each step is some informative text. So here you can see, first of all, you see your tadpole and then the legs growing and it turns into a froglet and then moves into a frog looking at its muscular, looking at its skeletal, uh, and then pulling it apart and being able to dissect it and see all the different um, organs within the frog's body, which is probably a little bit nicer than actually having to cut frogs open. Okay, I'm gonna move on now to some apps that get you to the creation phase of, um, augmented reality and this one is AR Maker and this one is a creative tool that allows students to transform their own creations into virtual objects. There are some ready-made uh, parts to it but uh, students can draw their own and upload their own as well so that they are showing their ability of being creative. So you bring in a little bit of art into it um, and story building as well. There's also a recording function so you can capture the students' experiences. So I'll just show you a brief bit of this video where you can see that we've taken a wolf character and put him in the lounge room. And then they're going to add from the library some trees. No, I really like trees. how you could. You can uh, reposition just about anything and also you resize can move things around. The different items. And then we're going to uh, bring the um, go back and redo three little anything. pigs into uh, the you'll picture notice as that well. There so this is an ability layering, to be able so to recreate the story of the three pigs. Front or what's in behind. And so you can have a lot of fun with this. When it's time to export your work, you can save it and then pull it back up. But once it's saved, it's you can't obviously can't go back to the same place in your living room. You can just save it as a uh, still image. And you can see here on the side that these are some images that students have actually drawn themselves and then placed them into uh, the real world. So this uh, AR make, Maker uh, has some starter templates. So it already gives the children some sort of starting point. And we were just looking at the three little pigs, but there are options around space missions, uh, looking at London or Japan, having tiny town or something in the ocean. There are some mythical creatures, but they can create their own scenes as well. So once they're familiar with maybe some of the starter templates, you'd want to move them on into their own creations. Now, Experience 10 is with Adobe Aero. This, again, is free through Adobe, and this allows you to build your own creations, test them out, view them, and share them interactively. The, this one provides a QR code option to be able to launch um, what you've created. And, of course, there's animation, there's sound, and you can bring different um, things to life. 
Uh, you can make cards, you could create a museum representing a historical event, you could do a virtual tour of a location, you can build stories. Error I'm just going to show you this one app here. That has huge potential to bring AR uh, authoring to the map. Different Let's uh, take a look already what it created can do. avatars are there. There are so many uh, videos. Adobe Aero is currently uh, available for free on iPadOS well. and is in private beta for desktop. Let's create a new project. When we start, we've got a view from our iPad camera and it prompts and us to scan really our area. And what's really important is that you've got enough light around you and that there's enough space around the chart that the student so that it can it create it. So let's tap uh, on this pin here to make this work area. To then build now into it. Now we can add an object by clicking plus in the bottom left. Let's choose from our so starter assets. Uh, let's select from plants and objects this pine that are in tree. there. Now or we can you see can it here. And let's just tap to place it on the desk. Now we can see when we move the iPad around. This is tracked just aware of time. pretty nicely. So uh, I'm really going to good. move on to the next one. Dude, there was now, just a question oh, on yes. that. Sorry, do they need an Adobe? Arrow, is it? Oh, do they need so, an Adobe account for that one? No, Aero is completely free. Anybody can download it. Uh, and I've put a couple of um, URLs there to have a look at a gallery for ideas. You can go to the Adobe website. You'll see the product there. You don't have to be an Adobe school to use it. You don't have to have a log on to use it. Um, but if you do want to save what you've created, then it's always good to have a log on so that it saves in the cloud. Right, Halo. Halo is free, and this is a very quick and easy way of creating augmented reality. Um, we used to have a, an app called HP Reveal, and then that was discontinued. Well, Halo AR has taken over that one. And so our students can, again, uh, create things really, really quickly. I'll show you this one up here on the top right corner where uh, some student artwork is on the wall and when you put it up with Halo AR over the turtle you're actually seeing video of a turtle moving so that's so the the artwork is the trigger and then you've used Halo AR and applied a video over the trigger you can have um, images as triggers uh, you can incorporate models, you can use photographs and text and videos as well. So this one down here, what happens is when you open the book, this giraffe literally appears from within the book and stands there and then the student can interact with it as well. So here's a wall of student work, and that one was Albert Einstein, which was the trigger, and then some information came up. Indiana Jones, E.T., Jurassic Park are some of the best movies ever made, thanks to the brilliant director Steven Spielberg. So that one was a trigger, Steven Spielberg, and the child had shared what they knew about him and the different um, movies that he'd been involved with and then those different uh, images overlaid it along with the child's recording. So um, now this one is free but if you want to keep the halos again it's a good idea to create the account so that your halos are then saved in the cloud. And I notice I've got 10 minutes to go, so I'll rush through these last few. Now, Assembler EDU uh, is another free option. This is a simple platform for teachers to start to use with their students and develop some interactive 3D experiences. Again, these concepts are coming to life. So similar to the other things that you've seen, this is yet another option to have a platform uh, to build, uh, having your photos and your videos and your text and it all happens quite quickly, like with the Halo AR. They also have free lesson plans and modules and lots of educational content. This one is not linked to our Australian curriculum, but there's still lots of things in it that are worthwhile looking at. So students are encouraged to create and design. Um, they've got the visual options. You can explain things that are very abstract. 
There's a huge library in there. And again, we're looking at fostering creativity with our children. Sue, there was a couple of questions about um, uh, will they not save to the iPad? So do you need the Halo app to use at the ed at Education um, Week or Display for Parents? I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, just reading all the information, it said you had to create a an account to keep your Halo in a cloud. So whether it stays on that particular device, I'm yet to explore that myself. Great. Um, now, this uh, experience number 13 um, is called Seek and it's by the group called iNaturalist. Now, this one is a little bit different because it's using artificial intelligence as part of its technology, where it's all around image recognition. Now, this one is a citizen science project, and what they've done is they've developed a database, and this helps students to identify plants and wildlife. So, for instance, if you find a mushroom or a flower or a bug and you're not sure what it is, then what you do is open up the Seek app, you scan that organism, and then the app will try and identify it from the online, online database. Now, this has uh, got a lot of Australian content in it. And it shows you uh, a list of commonly recorded insects, birds, plants, and amphibians from around your area. Uh, what's interesting is that students can earn badges as they're finding different plants and animals. So there's kind of incentive to get out there and see what you can find in the real world. What I like about this is this is mixing your screen time with your green time uh, and enabling students to use their digital devices for a purpose. Now, um, SEEK also has some challenges within it. So in 2019, they had eight challenges for students to participate in. Uh, and then they launch new challenges uh, each year. So if you're interested in joining in with one of their challenges, yep, download this one, it's free. And um, have a look at the user guide, which is also downloadable as well. Uh, now, Planets is another really good way of experiencing uh, our solar system in a 3D way, uh, where you're seeing the Earth actually revolve. It's one revolution uh, around the sun, and you can identify different planets and constellations and find out information about our sky. Uh, now, we touched on this in a previous webinar. So if you go to our CESAR YouTube channel and look for the webinar that's exploring Earth and space science with augmented reality, we unpack about planets uh, and how they can be used. And I'll just also mention that we have some lending library kits around augmented reality that's to do with earth and space sciences so people are encouraged to go online to our lending library and put in a request for one of those. Uh, another very popular experience for people to have is using the merge apps. There are three apps that go with the merge cube. The merge cube is this foam uh, cube here in the middle. It's black with silver markings on it. And when you use one of the apps, uh, the augmented reality comes to life. So Merge Explorer enables some science simulations. Uh, and there are a number of those where students can experience the Earth, the solar system, uh, different parts of uh, the human body, uh, frogs, uh, a whole range of things. And we have this also in our lending library kit. So we encourage people to register. And, um, and use those. Object Viewer looks at different objects and brings those to life a bit like a museum. And Hollow Globe is looking at the Earth uh, through NASA satellite imagery, looking at rainfall and temperatures, uh, forests and, and so forth. And if you want to know more, we have four webinars 
on the merge cubes and what is available within those. So I encourage you again to go to our lending library to borrow and to go to our YouTube Caesar channel to watch any of those webinars. And last but not least is co-spaces, another area where you can uh, create both augmented reality and virtual reality uh, in a 3D space and also using merge cubes with it. Uh, this particular tool is both um, goes through a browser, uh, so you can use it on a desktop or you can download the app. And basically you create virtual scenes, you can build within those scenes, you can add other files to it, and there's the coding element as well. All right then, um, so just a reminder, we've got our free lending kits. Um, so I'd encourage people to go to caesarmooks.adelaide.edu.au, click on the lending library and uh, to uh, register uh, for some equipment that we have there. So we'd love it if people could uh, keep in touch. You'll find us on hashtag Caesar STEM PL. Uh, and at Caesar Adelaide. We're on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. And thank you very much, everyone, for participating today. <laughs>